This review brought to you by Duffman. Ha ha ha. Happy Halloween. This is the review for Suicide Silence and Corn playing live at the Fillmore in Denver, Colorado. Uh, my wife and I planned this little trip once we heard Corn was playing in their entire first album. So we hauled ass out there. It took about nine and a half hours to get out there. And, uh,. Got there the day before, spent the day uh, climbing mountains and conquering shit in Denver. And, uh, well, we got ready. Had some, I had a couple of drinks. I had some good beers. And then we walked over to the Fillmore. Our hotel room is right across the street. So, as soon as we get there, we uh, purposely were, was late. We didn't care to see Islander. This is not a review for the Islander. Uh, it's a show, unfortunately. Uh, we looked him up beforehand and we just didn't like him. So, this is Suicide Silence coming up. Uh, as soon as we walked in, we were in awe just how big and wide the Fillmore is. First of all, it's really awesome. Got chandeliers hanging all over the place, beer vendors everywhere, and uh, really cool atmosphere. And it's just wide open. A lot of the venues here in Kansas City are kind of crunched together. I'd say the biggest one we have around here now is, uh, um, Oh, what is it? Uh, Uptown Theater. That's probably the biggest one we have. And it's while it's Uptown is wide open as well, and there's even a second floor. Um, the Fillmore is just way deeper. It's just it's just a huge de depth to it. So you can be way in the back, and there's a slight angle. It felt like, or maybe it's just because I'm tall, but you can see everything. It's really awesome. So Suicide Silence comes out, and they immediately begin. You only live once, and shit kicked up. And people started headbanging, and think people are getting into it. I was getting into it. Uh, my wife, it was her, her first time seeing it, seeing Suicide Silence, and uh, we really had a good time. Uh, then they played "Inherit the Crown" from their new album, and it was a pretty good song. I'm not the biggest fan of the newest album, but uh, the songs that they chose were really good live, so I I appreciated that. Uh, then they went into "Wake Up," which is a really familiar song, really simple lyrically, really good stuff. Sacred Words, uh, Slaves to Substance, a song I love off of the Black Crown. Uh, then Disengage, another great song off of uh, uh, to No Time to Bleed. Uh, Unanswered, one of their first singles, uh, You Can't Stop Me, and then No Pity for a Coward. That was their ninth song and their final song for the set. I will say their lighting show, uh, their production was really good. Sound was a little off. Uh, they sounded they sounded great. It just seemed like something in the PA or one of the amps or something was wrong where it was just a, a slight popping sound to the guitars on Mark's side. Uh, but it was still awesome. I had a sore neck immediately afterwards. I had banged my fucking head off. And it was fun. They put, they put on a great show and I enjoyed seeing them for the second time. And... They took, they left the stage, and then uh, about thirty minutes, everyone's pissing, refilling their drinks, and everything. And uh, lights dim, people are getting ready, and then Ray shows up on the drums and starts playing the introduction to "Blind" on the old cymbals there. Now, um, once you know that started, people erupt. Fieldy comes out and does his do 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 do. And more, it's like just the excitement and tension is just building and building. And then the guitars come on and people are screaming. And then Jonathan comes on and are you ready? And people are just jumping all over the place, having a good time. And the shit just hit the fan. It's, it's This is why we're here to see Korn play their very first album. And it was fucking great. Um, they've always played blind as part of their set list. And they jumped straight into ball tongue. That I'm this album is just good. I felt like I was 16 again almost. <laughs> and then, uh, so Baltong played, they kind of changed it up a little bit with uh, changing one of the verses out for like a Lottie Dottie, we likes to party, and they switched it up a little bit. Uh, Need to uh, the third, the third song, they changed up the second chorus with the chorus from Alive from uh, one of their newer albums. Uh, I can't remember what album that's from. But Need To was great. Then they jumped into Clown. Clown was fucking awesome. One of my favorite songs by them. Then jumping into another favorite of mine is Divine. And then uh, seeing Faggot Live. That was interesting. Hearing him sing those lyrics and getting the crowd to shout back 
the word faggot is just insane. And <laughs> it's just, oh man. And the, the crowd response to all of these songs are great, uh, but especially that they were screaming back at him, yelling faggot. And then once that song was over, uh, Shoots and Ladders came on with Jonathan Davis coming out with the bagpipes to get this thing started off uh, the way it should have. And uh, that it's, it's such a silly song. It, I've always thought that song was ridiculous since I've you know I've been a fan of the band for a long, long time, and I just thought that that was a ridiculous song. But it's also very interesting and creative. But that one was a very good song live. Um, Predictable was awesome. And then after Shoes and Ladders, it just seemed like the next three songs just were fucking phenomenal. Just They're already in in sequence. They're already great on the album. But in, in a live setting, it's just, it was just skin crawling. It was awesome. Um, Predictable was awesome. Fake was awesome. And then Lies. It's just... Um, there was one part, and I think the song Predictable, where... Uh, Jonathan Davis has, uh, he sings during the chorus and he was belting out some like low death metal growls. And it was just like, holy shit. I didn't know you could do that. I mean, I know you could do it a little bit, but just randomly like that, when you should be kind of doing your singing voice and you're going to just belt out some, and it was just really, it was really fucking awesome. I looked down at my wife and she looked up at me and I was like, "Hmm, holy shit. Um, and, uh, Helmet in the Bush is pretty good. It's my least favorite song on the album. So it was kind of just one of those where, yeah, this is necessary. It's also on the album. So you got to play it pretty good song live. But like I said, not one of my favorites. And then Daddy was next. Uh, the last song on the self-entitled first album. Now, this is like one of those just emotional roller coasters that just, if it's if if it's not just for Jonathan Davis, it's for many fans that can relate, and it's just it's it's a really good song. It's fucking heavy, but uh, it's just it's kind of awkward to hear him. Uh, just like it was just it was awkward and it was just uh, kind of just hard to listen to, uh, but it's still a good song. As soon as the song was over, he just left the stage. Um, and then there was a short break, you know, they left the stage. I think there was about two or three minutes and then they come back out and start playing falling away from me. And, uh, one of my favorites song off of issues. And then they jumped straight into here to stay, which has some monstrous guitar riffs in it. That was fucking awesome. And then they came into one of their more popular singles, that being, coming undone it's not one of my favorite songs but uh, it there was a definite positive crowd response to that everyone knows the words even if you don't like the song everyone knows the damn lyrics and you know how the the guitars go so you can get down to it it's a good song to to, to listen to and get a good crowd response but um it was it was okay um and then all of a sudden jonathan davis just wanted to he just whispered something in the fieldy's ears then Fieldy relayed the message to Monkey, and then he relayed the message to Head. And I don't know if Jonathan Davis just needed a break, just sip some water or something, but then uh, Ray had an impromptu drum solo, and it was pretty good. Then after that, came out with uh, a newer song from, uh, I don't know the name of the album, I'm not familiar with, New Corn, and that was Spike in My Veins, which... I just kind of sat there and watched. It had a decent crowd response, but I, I didn't, not a big fan of that song. And then they ended their set with "Freak on a Leash," and of course, people were going apeshit for that. That's one of their more popular singles, off of one of their great albums. So "Corn" was awesome. Uh, the light. I was standing behind the soundboard and watching the guy just play keyboard with the lights while they're playing music. That's just awesome, and he did a really phenomenal job portraying the atmosphere with the lights according to what was being played on stage. He did a phenomenal job there. Sound was better than Suicide Silence. There was no popping. There was no... Um, it was a little hard to hear Jonathan Davis from where I was standing, but I was standing behind the, the sound guy, which is kind of far away, but I'm tall, so I'm able to see everything. And while everything else sounded good, Jonathan Davis was a little, uh, his sound level was a little weak, but his performance was great. Um, it was, gr it was good to see Head perform with the band. Uh, first time I seen Korn was 2007, I believe. And you know, Head wasn't in the band, so it just, 
and they weren't playing very good songs, so it was okay then. But this was a much better experience. Heads back in the band. Monkey was kicking ass. Uh, Jonathan Davis is on his A game. Uh, Ray was doing a phenomenal job on the drums. And it was a really good solo. Good job. And Fieldy's bass playing is always fun to watch. He has a kind of simple, uh, simple style when it comes to his slap playing. But uh, I dig it. There's tons of groove when it comes to corn songs. And it's just, I love it. And so... Uh, I really enjoyed myself. My wife really loved it. Um, the crowd response was great. Lighting was good. The sound was phenomenal. And I love the film more. If I, I just I want to see some more shows there at that venue. But uh, it's a long drive, and it better be worth it. It better be, uh, you know, Corn playing their first album worth it. So uh, it was a great show. And if you missed them, you missed a great show. And I'm I, I hope you feel stupid. <laughs> but uh happy halloween thank you for watching this is the suicide silence corn review at the fillmore in denver colorado um i am duff man and i would like to dedicate this review to my lovely wife jennifer mergle um the <laughs> i wouldn't have drove out there all by myself to see that i i love you and i wanted to take you out there to see something nice so <sighs> well thank you for watching happy halloween Leave a like, comment if you saw them, um, if you liked the show, if you hate the show. Uh, what did you like about the show? What did you hate about the show? Do you even listen to Corn anymore? I've like I've liked Corn since '99, and it's, it's not going to stop. It's one of the few bands I can still listen to, them and Static X. So, uh, all right, have a good night. I'll see you in the next review.